Hey everybody, today on QRS TV, I wanna tell you about mean electrical axis. So what does that term mean? The mean electrical axis is a vector that represents the average or main direction of depolarization of electrical activity going through the heart. So if we think about you know, the, the innumerable numbers of, of vectors representing all the electrical activity that's traveling through the heart at any given time, if we could sum that up into one single vector telling us sort of magnitude and direction, that's what MEA or mean electrical axis is. And you might wonder, well, what's the utility of that? What does it tell us? It can certainly tell us about conduction system disturbances or normality. And it can also tell us about chamber enlargement, ventricular chamber enlargement. So let's talk about how to calculate that. Well, first we need to know about the frontal plane. So the frontal plane, think of that as a slice through the thorax, like a DV radiograph or a VD radiograph would be oriented. That's the frontal plane, if you could collapse a patient down into that two dimensions. And we can see that the six leads that are displayed to my left here in this dog's ECG, leads one, two, three, and AVR, AVL, and AVF are oriented around the frontal plane um, as this diagram shows in various directions. And each one of those leads represents a line of sight, um, kind of like a spectator in a stadium. And the positive pole of each of those six leads, which is that spectator's perspective, is represented by the arrowhead, um, arrowheads on, on that frontal plane diagram. And if we remember that the left ventricle has more mass, um, we can sort of easily comprehend that the MEA in the normal animal is sort of pulled towards the left, leftward. And specifically in the dog, my little triangle here represents the um, portion of this circle that represents the normal MEA in the dog. It's roughly 40 to 100 degrees, the way these um, degrees are, are oriented around that circle. And in the cat, it's quite a bit wider. So in the cat, the normal MEA is from zero to about 160 degrees. So let's work through this ECG to my left in this 11 year old female spade golden retriever. And I'm gonna tell you about a method called the isoelectric method. And I'm hoping this, that this will be um, easy and clinically relevant for you. So step one in the isoelectric method is to identify which of these leads in the frontal plane has a QRS complex whereby the negative components, so the Q and the S, um, are roughly equal in height or depth to the positive component or the R wave. So when I look at these six frontal plane leads, my eye is drawn to lead one. Because I think lead one has a QRS complex where the Q and the R are about equal in size. So that's my isoelectric lead. Step two is to look at the frontal plane diagram and ask yourself which lead is perpendicular to that. So we wanna find the lead perpendicular to our isoelectric lead. And looking at our frontal plane diagram, we can see lead one um, goes horizontally across the chest and perpendicular to that is lead AVF um, going from cranial to, to caudal. So AVF is our perpendicular lead. So our next and last step is to identify, okay, in AVF, is the QRS complex more positive? That is the R wave is the tallest deflection or is it more negative? That is the Q and the S summated together are actually deeper than the R. And when I look at AVF in our example here, clearly the R wave is, is the tallest deflection this QRS complex is more positive than negative or in orientation. And so the answer is the positive pole of AVF. That's where the MEA in this particular patient is pointing. So down here where I've circled the positive pole of AVF. Remember back to what we said about the dog, that lies within the normal range, 40 to 100 degrees. So in this case, this dog has a normal mean electrical axis. So recapping those steps, Step one, find your isoelectric lead. Step two, 
the MEA lies in the lead perpendicular to that. So find your perpendicular lead. Then step three, ask yourself, is the QRS more positive? That is, is the R wave taller than the sum of the Q and the S? And if that's true, then your answer is the positive pole of that perpendicular lead. If no, that is if the QRS complex is more negative, that is the Q and the S summated together are deeper than the R, then the answer is the negative pole of that perpendicular lead. I hope that was helpful. And next time we'll dive into another example. Thanks.